Um, I heard an amazing story once about this uh, guy, an Aikido master. So here's this guy, an English guy, and he's on the um, a bullet train or something in, in Japan. He's gone over there to study with one of the masters there, one of the only people who could grade him higher than he already is. And he's been working very hard there and everything. He's on the bus one, he's on the train one day, and there's this huge guy comes in, and he's, you know, he's drunk, and he's screaming at people, and he's like, and he's full of, you know, his anger, and he's right on the edge, and he's, you know, you, th you think something terrible is going to happen. And this guy, this Aikido bloke, is coming in. He's, uh, he's thinking, right, if he lays a hand on one person, I'm going to drop him in this move or in that move. If he comes a little bit closer, if he knocks into me, I'm going to drop him in this move. If he does that, I'm going to drop him in this move. If he does so and so, I'm going to drop him in that. And the guy's coming past and abusing people and shouting and all that sort of thing. And he's coming closer and coming closer. Right, he's just in that position. If his hand goes up and he knocks into somebody, I'm going to drop him in this move or in that move. And he's thinking all the way through it. And just as the guy starts to come past him, this 92-year-old man who's sitting in the seat next to him, he says, um, what have you been drinking? What? What have you been drinking? Sake! He goes, oh, I love sake. You know, my wife and I, we used to drink sake on the porch in front of our house in the summer. And we used to ice it. Do you like iced sake? Five minutes later, this guy sat down next to him, crying his eyes out. He's lost his job. His wife's left him. He's got pissed. He's in a terrible state. He's unloading. And this man, this Aikido guy, says, I just learned what it's all about. It's not about this move or that move. It's about true compassion and finding another way. And if I have to resort to this move or that move, I'm not really doing the art. This question, <clears throat> what's your purpose, is perhaps the biggest question in life, the most seldom asked, and a very easy one to answer. Have you ever seen a child that is not curious? So it's part of our natural state. <gasps> A child learning to do something, just, you know, my, my ne uh, nephew is, is just, he's just starting to walk. He looks kind of drunk, you know, but he loves walking so much. You know, they call him Forrest Gump in my brother's family because he just likes to walk. He doesn't care where he's going just as long as he keeps on going, you know. And um, curiosity, this total joy of of finding out new things. And I, if you had to stand up in front of a room and you're not a very practiced public speaker, how would you feel? <laughs> and people live their purpose, they become unshakable. How would you know at the end of your life that you'd had a fulfilled life? I had was that, that people, when they're not living their values and they're not living for their highest gifts, they're kind of in conflict with themselves. And so inside, they're boxing and they're boxing with themselves. They're boxing with another part of themselves. They're defending and they're trying to, ah, oh, and they get hit by the doubts and they get struck by, you know, some negative thought and, and my teacher says this and they get reminded of what their parents used to say and they're fighting back and fighting back and fighting back and fighting back. Have you ever seen a boxer's body? Have you ever seen the training routine that a boxer goes through? Has anybody ever tried to do three minutes boxing? <laughs> It is knackering, which is what we're doing all the time that we're, we're competing with these doubts. Have you ever been to, you've been to a party, dinner party, and someone says, you know, what do you do for a living? I'm a this, what do you do? I'm a that, and then, oh really? <laughs> that must be interesting. Do you enjoy it? Small talk, small talk, small talk, small talk, small talk. Five minutes later, there's either some kind of connection or just going to get a drink. <laughs> right? True? Okay. You're going to go to a dinner party and somebody says, uh, what's your purpose? <laughs> what part of a person would you get to know? The real person? 
their spirit, their soul, the authentic person. So there, there are three things that comprise our purpose. The first is our values. The second are our gifts, talents, and abilities. The third area is the contribution I'm most inspired to make. Where those three intersect is a deep, juicy place of meaning. Oh my God, the grill, the clouds open and thank you. And the angels singing and all that sort of thing. Basically what it is, is a, ver is a deepening. It's like, oh yes. Huh. It's like when you've been listening to the radio for quite a long time, <coughs> bless you, slightly off the station. And then you get it and it goes, and you go on the station, and then there's suddenly oh, this huge relaxation happens when the, like when the fridge stops humming.